Good morning. How's my family this morning? Thank you, Nick. You rock that song out. You kind of can see how all this ties together now. My goodness. Have any of you ever been stuck in the mud? You know, I, I know many of you haven't been stuck as much as that first tractor. I mean, I didn't even know it was a tractor until they started pulling out of the mud, but that's a, that's a serious problem right there. Maybe n- none of us ever been stuck that bad. Uh, depends on what you do in your life. You know, I've seen cows and horses stuck in the mud before, and you couldn't get themselves free. We were on a um, ride one time, uh, actually a bass tournament down at uh, Lake Whitney with some friends of ours, uh, the bass club, and some friends of ours brought their horses, and they were going to ride while we went and bass fished. And down in Whitney, if you get a little bit in some bad areas, there's some sand that you can get off in and get stuck. And Stan Winters... uh, him and uh, one of his friends, Tater, they're out riding with a group, and Tater seemed to get his horse stuck in some quicksand. And, and uh, the more the horse struggled to get out, the, the more he sank. And stands, oh, Stan takes his rope everywhere where he goes, and he said he had to decide whether to save Tater or the horse. You know, that was one of the, the distinctions, but he was able to pull him out. So, you know, everybody can get stuck. Everything can get stuck. I've seen people that... At been at times where people are just walking through the mud and they get stuck and have to have someone pull them out. They'll come out without their shoes or their boots or anything. You've probably been there if you ever had on mud boots. One time I was working for a cell company. They sent me down to Athens to do a job down there. They had a, a cell tower that washed completely out. And I had to go in there and fill all this area back in. And uh, I, I rented a skid steer with the tracks on it, you know, because they get better traction. And it was pretty it was pretty wet off down in there. And I got da- back off down in one side, and I got over in this uh, mud and sand, and I sunk. And the more I tried to get that skid steer out, the lower it went. And, I mean, it was sank up above those tracks, and then I knew I was in trouble. And, of course, I had to call a tow service to come out, and they run pulleys off every tree to get me out of there so you know we can all find ourselves uh stuck in the mud some way or another and trying to get out and probably each of us can relate to one time or another we found ourselves stuck even in our cars or vehicles or or something like that and every time we tried to move forward it was like quicksand we just went deeper you know and we'd back up and we'd go further and forward and every time we did that we just sunk deeper and and many times there's no way to get out And I can say from experience, and many of you can too, when stuck, it becomes a little embarrassing and a little bit frustrating, right? So we kind of put ourselves in that position because sometimes we know better than to drive off in there. We got four-wheel drive, right, guys? We can get out of anything. Not true. (laughs) And we finally come to the reality that we're not going to get unstuck without, unless we reach out for help, someone to come help give us a push or a toe out of there. You know, we, we, we try and try and try because of that embarrassment that we don't want to call somebody. And then finally, we just have to break down and call somebody that won't laugh quite as hard at us as everybody else, you know. And you may find this hard to believe. Here we are nine days into 2022, and there's still people stuck doing the same thing that caused them problems in 2021. They're still stuck in the mud in 2021 doing exactly the same thing. I'd say to those folks, it's time to get unstuck and move forward. It's time to reach out. Amen. I spoke a little about this last week when we looked at Paul's statement in Philippians 3.13, which says, One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Right? Right? So that's kind of where we're going with it this morning, how we get stuck in one place because we're not forgetting about what's behind us and looking at what's in front of us. You know, we do need to get ourselves unstuck and start moving forward, especially in our walk with Christ, in our personal lives, our jobs, our marriages, our relationships. It's time to get unstuck. And move forward because even in all those situations, we can find ourselves stuck one place and not moving forward. Sometimes that's out of comfort itself. The question is, how do we get out of the cycle of staying stuck in the mud by remaining in the past? Many people do this. And we can't be successful in life or having any kind of meaningful relationship while stuck in the mud. 
There's no way. Even the relationship we would have with the Lord, we can find ourselves not having that meaningful relationship or that intimate relationship with the Lord because we're stuck in one place and we don't want to move. We don't want to want to follow the Lord's lead in many cases. The longer we find ourselves looking back, I'll tell you that, the greater the chance of becoming stuck. The more you look back, the more you have a chance of getting stuck, not moving forward or backwards in life at all. You're just stuck in one place. Many of you have been there. I've been there before, and I'm not exempt from that, and many of us can find ourselves there. Let's look at an example from the Bible. Great example right here. If you'd turn with me this morning, if you open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 19, we're going to pick up at verse 12. Genesis chapter 19, beginning at verse 12. And we're picking up here where the two angels of the Lord had arrived in the city of Sodom to tell Lot that he needed to leave because the Lord was about to destroy the city because of the evil things that were going on there. So the two angels were there and they were speaking to Lot where we're picking up right here. So we're picking up in verse 12. It says, the two men said to Lot, do you have anyone else here? Son-in-laws, sons, or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against its people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons, sons in laws who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, Hurry and get out of this place because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons in laws thought he was joking. When the coming of dawn, with the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, Hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here or you will be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and his two daughters and led them safely out of the city, for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they, brought them out, as soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains, or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, No, my lords, please. Your servant has found favor in your eyes, and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me, and I'll die. Look here is a town near enough to run to, and it is small. Let me flee to it, and it is, <clears throat> it, it is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, Very well, I will grant, grant this request to you. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That's why the town was called Zor. By the time Lot reached Zor, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities in the entire plain, destroying all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. We're going to stop right there. So what's that? That right there is a great example when the Lord said, don't look back, and she did anyway. And many people say, now why would she do that? She was just instructed not to do that. Well, I think we can see right here that Lot's wife, she didn't listen for one because she was stuck in the mud. She was stuck in the mud right where she was. She was the one who pressed Lot to move to the city of Sodom in the first place. And she must have been enjoying a wonderful life there for some reason. She was materialistic and wealthy compared to many standards of the day. Her and Lot seemed to be prosperous there. And even Lot had become accustomed to his lifestyle and didn't really want to leave either. So what she was doing, she was hanging on to stuff. She was hanging on to her past. She was stuck in the mud right there in that city, along with Lot. Because it tells us that Lot, he didn't really want to leave either. So let's look at verse 15 and 16 one more time. Let's go back there in uh, Ephesians 19. Go to verse 15. I'm sorry, Genesis. Genesis. Genesis 19. I'm sorry, I'm going too fast. Look at verse 15. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, Hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. 
When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and his two daughters and led them safely out of the city, for the Lord is merciful to them. Look what it says right there. Lot hesitated. And that's the important part right here. Lot had become accustomed also to his lifestyle there in the city, and he didn't want to abandon the wealth and comfort to which he was accustomed to at that time. And that's why it says he hesitated. Because once again, he was stuck in the mud too. Just wanting to stay and look behind you instead of looking what's in forward. Even though the Lord is telling them, we're going to destroy this city. Evidently, Lot and his wife had a little doubt themselves, right? Right then, as his son-in-laws or future son-in-laws did. Because they thought it was a joke. But Lot, he couldn't decide whether to stay or go. His hesitation means that he wanted to remain in the past. He wanted to remain stuck right where he was, even though it wasn't the best thing for him. And look what happened to Lot's wife. She looked back. She's a pillar of salt. Well, I'd say now you're really stuck, right? You're not going to move forward from there. And are we any different? Are we any different than this situation? Are we willing to leave our comfort zone, our stuff, and other worldly possessions we have to follow Christ? Are we willing to do that? Are we any different? We have, to, we have to ponder that with ourselves. You know, it's between us and the Lord, but it's something to think about. Are we willing to give up everything to follow Christ? Many of the disciples did. Many people do today. Material stuff's not important. And they don't live in the past stuck in the mud. They move forward. And they follow Christ, and they follow Christ's lead. Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. Jesus speaking right here. Matthew 19, verse 29, Jesus speaking, And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children of fields, for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. What are you willing to give up to follow Jesus Christ? That's basically what we're saying right here. How would you choose today if you had that choice? Would you remain stuck in the mud by holding on to stuff? Of all your stuff and living in the past, or be willing to get unstuck. Let it go and follow Jesus Christ. Which are you willing to do? How important is your stuff and material things? How important is your past that you keep going back there, you keep living there, that you're not ready to move forward and let Jesus Christ direct you in your life and your path for the future? Paul reminded us that we don't have to stay stuck. That's what Paul's reminder was. We need to stop looking back and keep moving forward. Real simple. And Paul tells us that. You know, there's going to be mud in our lives. There's no way around that. But it's really the ruts that hold us back, not the mud itself. Amen? Because we get in ruts. That's how we get stuck. Whether in the sunshine or the rain, doesn't matter. God's love and care for us is always at work in our lives. Always. doesn't matter whether it's raining or sun shining. He never stops. He's never deterred or he's never distracted on what's going on in our lives. Because he doesn't want us stuck there. He doesn't want us stuck in one place. He wants us moving forward. Because when we're moving forward, we can be a witness for him. Because we've been there stuck. We've been in the mud. We can share with others what Jesus Christ did for us. How he brought us forward. How he got us unstuck and moving. We can share that. That's why Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transition, transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. Even though we were dead to our sins, God showed us mercy and made us alive with Christ. Basically, he never leaves us. He's looking after us. He's the one that doesn't want us stuck. Even when we're stuck in the mud of life and didn't even know it, God was at work in Jesus Christ to rescue us all. It's because sometimes we don't realize we're stuck. Any of you been there? We don't realize that we're doing the same thing over and over again. 
remaining stuck, not moving forward, looking in the past, and just remaining there, not growing in faith, not growing in the Lord, not growing in relationships. We're just in one place. We're in our comfort zone, and we don't want to be moved out of it. Sometimes it's because of the same reason when we get stuck. We're embarrassed to ask for help. The Christian life actually begins with us stuck in the mud. The Christian life itself. Think about that. We actually begin all stuck in the mud before we come to know Christ. Amen? Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Every life, every life has mud holes. There's not one life out there that doesn't. That's why Jesus Christ came to deliver us from the mud holes in our lives. Now, that's a metaphor, I know, and it, it, we're using mud as an example, but it's the same way. You ever got mud all over you? You know, it's, it's the same thing. God came to rescue us out of those mud holes so that we wouldn't remain in one spot. We just need to keep moving in the right direction. Even if the mud holes and ruts of this world want to keep us stuck, we don't need to allow that to happen. We need to keep moving, moving forward. There are times that we find ourselves so stuck, so buried, there's nothing we can do but reach out for help or call out for help. Nothing else. We're down to that point. We sunk all the way to rock bottom, they would say. And there's only one thing to do, and that's to reach out for help. But because of the embarrassment of being stuck, we find it difficult to ask for that help. We find it difficult to reach out for help. And what this is called? Pride. And pride will allow us to main, remain stuck our whole lives unless we allow pride to get out of the way. And I know more men are prideful than women. Women can get stuck and laugh it off. Oh, I'll just call my husband. He'll get me out. Right? Right? So men are more prideful. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, if you'd turn with me there. Ephesians chapter 2, begin at verse 8. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast. Put your pride behind you. If you're struggling in a spot and you're stuck in a spot or you got something going on and you're having trouble moving forward, reach out. Call out for help. It's available through the Lord Jesus Christ and through many members in this church that are there to help you get unstuck. And I want you to know that you can get stuck just about anywhere. You can even get stuck in church. And I'm not talking about your vehicle. I think we got our parking lot pretty straight, even though every once in a while we get there. But I'm talking about our spirit and our walk with the Lord where we can become stuck and not moving forward at all. We just remain in the same place. Our spirit and our walk with the Lord become stuck because of not reading or studying God's Word or reading our Bibles. We're just staying in one place. We're not increasing our walk with the Lord. That's called being stuck. So we should be doing that each and every day moving forward. The fact is that in the future, rain will fall on, just, on the just and the unjust. No different. Rain will fall on them, creating mud in our lives. That's not going to change. And the trials of life are necessary because they help us move forward. Every time you go through a trial in life, it helps you move forward. When I was very young, I was probably about four or five years old. And we lived out in the country at the time, and me and my brother and uh, some of our relatives were all there, and it had been raining. And we wanted to go out and play, and Mom goes, no, y'all aren't going to go out and play because you get in the mud. We had one little sidewalk just down from our house that we could go out on. She said, okay, we bugged her enough. She said, okay, you can go out there and play as long as you stay on that sidewalk, but don't get in the mud. Because if you get in the mud, you're going to get a spanking. Well, what does any kid do? We played in the mud. I think there was five of us at the time, and of course, mom caught us and lined us up and said, you know, I told you if you played in the mud, you're going to get a spanking. 
So lined us up, and everybody's going to get a spanking. Well, I became the spokesman of the group. I said, Mom, if you spank me, I'm going to smear mud all over your screen door. Now, that's defined at four or five years old. She spanked me anyway. I smeared the mud. I got another spanking, right? Now, is that a learning experience or not? I mean, think about it. That's a trial in life. I learned you don't smear mud on my mom's door, right? And it was a hard lesson to learn. That's a good example. Our Christian life begins in the mud, but there's always help to get us out. And I'm going to tell you what, my mom helped me get out of that mud real quick. I learned real quick about that. So trials, there's nothing wrong with trials in our lives. I was told that there was uh, one spring a small girl had been promised the privilege of climbing to a near t nearby hilltop where her brother enjoyed playing all the time. But when she came within sight of the steep, rough path, she drew back in dismay. She said to her brother, there isn't a smooth spot anywhere. It's all bumpy, stony, and muddy from the spring rain. Yes, that's true, he replied. But how else would we ever climb to the top if it wasn't? The stones and bumps are what we step onto to get there. And the mud helps us appreciate the stones and the bumps. Amen. Sometimes we have to go through some tough things. We have to go through some tough things to really appreciate the mud in our lives and how we're not stuck anymore. Remember the rough spots in our lives are like stones and bumps. It helps us not to become stuck in the mud. We look for that perfect step and God directs and guides those steps so we stay unstuck. Sometimes we just got to figure that out for ourselves. We got to figure out how we can continue to move forward. You know, we're in a new year here. There's no better time than to stop looking back. What's in the past is in the past. God forgives everything. He's already forgiven you if you ask for anything going on in your past. So why are you looking back there? Why are you stuck back there in that situation where you maintain that? Say, well, other people keep bringing it up, then they're stuck, not you, right? They're stuck there. You don't have to remain there. Paul tells us that. We need to stride to move forward, not looking back in the past. Same thing applies to each and every one of us in our lives. Don't find yourself stuck somewhere where you can't get out. And if you are finding yourself stuck somewhere in life, then reach out for some help by allowing us here at the church to give you a push or a toe or direct you to the Lord in his direction so you can move forward and not remain stuck this next year at all. Today's the day to uh, get unstuck and move forward. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning, Father, and we are just thankful. Father, we're thankful for your blessings, the favor you pour out on us here. Father, we're thankful that you care enough that we don't stay stuck, Father, in our past. Father, that we don't get, stay stuck right where we are, not growing in faith and strength from you. Father, you are the tow truck, so Father, we need to seek you in everything we do. When we find ourselves stuck somewhere... Father, we need to call on you for that direction, that toe, that push that will get us back on track because, Father, we all find ourselves falling in those mud holes of life. But, Father, because of you, we don't have to stay there. We have the opportunity to get unstuck and move forward. Father, I know you care so much about us. You love us so much, Father, that you're there for us in everything we do. Father, I pray today if there's someone here that they just feel like they're stuck, that they're bound right where they are, Father, that they would put their pride to one side and reach out. Reach out for that help that's available right here through this church and through your word and your will. Father, we love you. We praise you. We pray today that everything we did, everything we said was uplifting, glorifying, and pleasing to you. We ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.